Grant family have definitely had a rough two weeks of football. And when you go through rough patches like this, you have to sit back, analyze things from the beginning to see exactly what can you do to right the ship for you to move forward and get things going in a manner which you want to. So we're going to go ahead and break down this film right now. This is your favorite coach back at it again. Ten toes down, about to tell you how it all went down. This is Tomorrow Leaf Sports Network with your host, Coach Walker. If you're new to the channel, please make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell, comment on these videos, share these videos, and for all my leaders out there, welcome back. Y'all know the drill. Y'all know the routine. Guys, not, don't forget, make sure you hit that notification bell so you get all upcoming videos. Also, make sure you like, comment, and share these videos as well. Not to mention, tap in a friend or two and tell them to come on in. It's not but positive vibes. We're just having a good time talking about HBCU sports. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and tap on in this thing right now and get this thing started. I know, I'm going to piss off some of my grandfam folks, but I got to speak on it, guys. I got to speak on it. I'm confused as to what is going on with this team right now. Watching the game against the University of Houston has me wondering a few things. And I want to know if everyone has truly bought into the system emotionally, physically, and mentally. Or if they're, if they're at a turning point right now where they're trying to figure out that, you know, hey, the season is pretty much up in smoke. I mean, yeah, you guys did beat, beat Tennessee State 16-10, to 10, but I'm still trying to understand where everybody's mindset is right now. Because I'm like, in the past two weeks, Grambling has scored no points. But the opponent has scored a total of 82 now, in the first quarter of the Houston game, I give you guys credit. The defense held them down as far as making sure that they didn't score any points until the end of the first quarter. Now, and they, they, kept, they kept the game close. I got to give them that. So I'm not going, but, but I, I, can't, I can't let the defense off the hook that easily. But looking at some of the things that was going on within the game, um, that fourth and one when Houston had the ball, you guys allowed them – to not only convert the fourth and one close to the red zone or in the red zone, but you allow them to score a touchdown as well. It's almost as if defenders are not understanding not their assignment. And, you know, you you left, a, I mean, there's a gaping hole. I mean, look at the gaping hole that's left wide open on the side of the ball where they ran, I mean, on the left-hand side of the ball for to take it to the house. I mean, it's like nobody else engaged. So that's why I'm asking the question emotionally, physically, and mentally into this team, into this team, to make sure that they get things over the hump. Yeah, I know you guys won one game already, and everybody's excited, like, hey, we won more, we won one more than we did in the spring. But you know what? With all of the recruits that came in, or better yet, with uh, with the with the number of recruits that came onto the team this uh, you know, after the spring season was over with, everybody was looking forward to Grambling State doing some phenomenal things. So I'm trying to understand what's going on, guys. Somebody, so, hey, somebody leave me a comment below and let me know what's happening because Coach is confused right now. But I'm going to go ahead and get back into this thing because you know what? You guys got quarterback issues as well. I understand Elijah Walker is out. He did not play. Uh, you guys had Alden Clark. Uh, he was inserted into the game as QB1. Now, I'm a big uglies up front. I got to start with you guys first because number 65, Jordan Igafos, 74, Kyle Davis, 67, Chris Shernick Jr., number 77, Tyler Tyler Thomas, number 61, Errol Walker. Listen, I know you guys have heard since you started playing football that the quarterback is the most important position on the team. But Coach is going to tell you right now that's a bunch of hogwash. You know who's the you know who's the most important person on the team? The daggone five linemen up front that's blocking for the quarterback, the running backs, and for the quarterback to throw the ball to the receivers. Because guess what? If you guys are not blocking up front, this turns into a 7-on-7 seven -seven game. And I don't think uh, Grambling is playing 7-on-11 seven no time soon. So I'm just saying, you guys, you guys are very important. And you guys got to do your job up front. I mean, getting beat off the ball, reaching out. You're off balance trying to reach out to block somebody. Not keeping your head on a swivel to see what's going on. There's a lot of crazy things that's happening up there on that line of scrimmage where you guys are just getting beat off the ball, play after play. It's almost as if people did not understand their assignments as far as what was going on with that play. Um, the quarterback's got to protect the ball. I mean, you guys came out there, you threw a couple of wrinkles at uh, the University of Houston that had them a little bit off balance. I kind of wish that the offensive coordinator would have continued with that in the game. I don't know if a lot of these coaches out here are trying to hold on to their playbooks and don't want to show their swack opponents too, you know, too many wrinkles in their offense, you know, because they're trying to save it for the for the swack season. I'm like, listen, guys, get out here, coach these guys up. If they're already out here on the field getting their tail kicked in, what makes you think this is going to change once the daggone SWAC conference play starts? It's already, it's already getting up here in a mental state where people are just like, man, hey, look, 
We we are here getting our tail kicked in. Remember, you have not scored a point in two weeks. You've allowed opponents to score a total of 82 points in two weeks. You got to do something to put put some points on the board. Heck, it was one point in time during the game that uh, the players wanted to go for it on fourth down, and the coaches, you know, they now nah, we ain't going to do it. Why not? I'm like, you, you're you already down 21 to nothing. Why not do it? I mean, sometimes you got to think a little bit outside the box. Take a gamble on your players just to see what they can do. And again, you know, let them know, hey, guys, look, you guys said you wanted to go. We went for it. Now, we didn't make it, or if we did make it, hey, congratulations, we keep it moving. But, man, just say, all right, we ain't going to do it. I'm like, come on, man, what what, what, we, what are we doing here? But I'm going to go ahead, I'm, I'm going to put it to you like this. If the offense does not pick up the pace, we're putting some points on the board, it's going to be a long, daggone season for a lot of folks. And I'll say two more games. I will say Grambling may win two games this season. I'm just going to be honest with you. I know a lot of you may not want to hear that, but I'm just going to be real with you. Gremlin may win two more games this season. Gremlin has Prairie View this week, who is two and one. Let me tell you right now, quarterback Juwan Puma Pace is lighting up the sky right now on that stat sheet. He's throwing the ball. He's throwing the ball all over the field for a total of 900 yards in three games, six touchdowns and five interceptions. Not to Prairie View, A&M is averaging 3.5 yards per carry rushing the ball. Now, this game will be close for the first two series because Gramlin doesn't have a quarterback that will be able to move that ball up and down the field for them to continue to keep moving the chains as well as putting points on the board. And not to mention, um, Prairie View A&M defense, they ain't playing shabby themselves, so trust to believe they're going to be out there going at it trying to make sure they keep you guys from scoring the ball. So, Again, it's, it's going to be tough sled. I just hope I just hope you guys can get out here and really compete and do some things that, you know, many of us have been expecting, myself included, waiting on you guys to do this season that has not taken place yet. I mean, yeah, you guys won the game against uh, Tennessee State. I'm like, you're dealing with Eddie George, who's just getting his feet wet in uh, 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 college football. I salute, I salute them for winning their first game. Uh, they did win their first game over the past weekend. Salute them for that. But, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. Like I said before, this game will be close for the first two series. And without Grambling getting this quarterback issue resolved, it's going to be a long season. Defense, they're going to bring it for four quarters. I mean, it, it, it is what it is. They're averaging – the Panthers' defense is allowing 22 points per game. Grambling has not scored 22 points in three games. So you do the math on how this is getting ready to look. But I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to give my prediction on this right now. I'm going with Prairie View and m Grambling, I love you guys. Don't get upset with Coach. I'm just saying – I'm waiting on you guys to show me something different. I've been saying from the beginning that you guys are going to bring the pain, and I have not seen anything. Even in these big money games, guys, I understand what's going on where you're like, man, you know, we, we, we're we a little bit in over our heads, but you got to show some type of fight. And, I mean, you show, you know, you show a little fight on the defense, but then the offense, they, they farting off and doing whatever. You got to fix this stuff, guys. It's time to get this in order. Like I said before, there's a lot on the line, and you guys want to go ahead and do what you need to do to get things, you know, get, get stuff popping, man. Get it moving in the right direction. And I know you guys can do it. So let's get out there and make that happen. But until next time, if you like the content, please like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Like these videos. Comment on these videos. Share these videos. And remember, guys, don't forget, follow us on social media. The links are listed down below in the description. And remember, be the one and lead.